Okay, everybody. So this week we'll be covering events in causal factor charting and the Y analysis method. Initially looking at the recap here. Um, yeah, there's not a ton on the Slack to really go over. I liked, you know, some of the discussions were kind of interesting, especially with the Titanic stuff. It was also interesting to see, and I wanted, that's the second bullet, right? I wanted you guys to think about um, what's changed throughout the course. Like, um, it seems like you described the second incident uh, in a slightly different way than you did the first one in the class. Um, but that's been interesting there. Um, I definitely think, you know, uh, Jamie, you, you definitely picked a rough one in terms of a formal accident investigation. Uh, I also like that not being corrupt is a barrier. I would think so, but that's, it's interesting to capture that. Um, and one of the things, Todd, for the Columbia space shuttle thing that you may want to look at, at least it's been part of the dialogue and some resilience engineering stuff is um, how much of an impact Challenger made on Columbia, on the culture of NASA, um, kind of the situation they were under, um, especially one of the interesting things you said, um, they'd accepted deviations for time and financial reasons. One of the interesting parts about that is once upon a time, I did a, I don't even remember, it was an undergrad, one of my generals, I had to do a report and I chose the James Webb Space Telescope, which is going to be replacing the Hubble. And um, I covered how um, at one of the uh, budget meetings in Congress, uh, they had asked the chief technologist for the product for, for the project, what was going on with the cost overruns, why they couldn't accurately, you know, project costs. And the chief technologist responded, uh, you know, to the Congress member. I don't remember if it was a congressman or woman, but uh, he's essentially said we're doing things that no one's ever done and we're scientists, not accountants, which always made me laugh because that's, that's true with NASA, right? Like how do you predict the cost of materials that you're gonna create solely for this purpose a lot of times? Um, and yeah, Shane with Chernobyl, Chernobyl is Chernobyl's an interesting one because God, everything went wrong. Like it was bad design, poor safety, poor, risk understanding, poor organizational structure. There were a lot, a lot of problems with Chernobyl. Um, one of the interesting things for everybody else too, um, if you can spend some time looking into the vault and the just amazing engineering that has went into containing uh, the reactor cores and vessels and stuff, it's, uh, they had to rebuild it some time ago. I don't remember. 10 maybe longer years ago but it's an interesting one there so okay and then yeah we'll end the at the end of this i've got stuff for next week but um first just looking at charting events and causal factors so we've already kind of done this right the one thing we'll cover a little bit is how much overlap there is in these methods but when you do a task analysis or any kind of a of that kind of a method you're going to be charting events and causal factors. This is just the quote unquote formal method for that. So your goal is to chart the relationship of events, conditions, changes, barriers, and causal factors on a timeline. The timeline is the operative word here. Um, you can anachronize it or acronize it if you want to ECFC. Um, it's really, really helpful when you have super complex situations. Um, which, you know, all the famous accidents that we picked are, because that's why they're famous. But um, even in just situations where there's more than one potential root cause, this is a helpful way to try to find which one's the real root. And the graphical nature of the ECFC can help visualize the relationship. So remember, we talked about that with the uh, power and amount of information we can process through our visual system. Um, you can see relationships and patterns far more than you could understand them through other sensory means. So, so like I said, the heart of the chart is the timeline. 
didn't mean for that to rhyme. Um, the starting and ending point should be adequate to capture all the important information to the situation. You don't want to start your chart too early. You don't want to end it too late. And you are developing a graphic representation of a sequence of events that led to the adverse consequence or event. You need to identify the conditions, any inappropriate actions, causal factors, changes that led to those consequences, and any barriers that should have prevented the consequence. This one's an important one to uh, kind of pay attention to or pause the video, write it down, draw it, I don't know. Um, when you're doing um, event and causal factor charts, uh, there's some slight variations, but in general, these are the way that you represent them. Sometimes you'll do this on like a wall, like a whiteboarding experiment and people will, will totally show up with different shaped sticky notes. So um, the big difference that you'll see here is uh, the dotted lines around these two indicates it's presumptive or there's an assumption at play in that. So if you're ever doing one of these and you, dot a, you have an assumption, something that you can't back up exactly with what was going on in the evidence, but you think it's what happened, that's something you'll draw a dotted line around. And then I'll show you in a little bit what this all looks like when it's laid out, but these are just some of the main features you'll look for or use. Now, the biggest way that you get in trouble with event and causal factor charting is in developing the events. So if we go back, these are going to be the standard boxes that are going to, you'll see this on the future, they'll write up at the top of your timeline and they are the discrete instances as you walk through the event. Or that's hard. The events are the discrete instances as you walk through the overall accident. Um, these are things to just keep in mind strongly. So any event has to describe a single action or happening. So you can't combine them. That means conjunctions should not exist in your uh, event. That's one way to easily spot that is if you've used an and or something like that. Um, has to be described by a short sentence, has to be precisely described, and should be quantified whenever possible. You know, like, oh, the, the event was uh, the temperature of the reactor went to this value, which was exceeding tech specs or something. And it has to be based on valid information. Um, that's the last one. Now you can have events that aren't necessarily based on valid information, but they would be dotted and they would be assumptions that then throughout your event analysis, you will try to piece together or find the valid information for that. So here's an example of one. Um, so you'd have, you know, your timeline is here. This is how you read these. So uh, we have two um preconditions in this instance um they're not events because these are the events the boxes here um as you can see there's a lot of different ways but you're essentially what you're doing is this is our diamond so this is our inappropriate action you're usually you're going to go down when you get to your inappropriate action most of the time and then this is where you start going down. If this is your inappropriate action, leadership team does not challenge conditions associated with the alarm. It was not a challenge at the plan of the day meeting. Why not? Oh, you failed to question whether the alarm was due to an inner seal O-ring degradation. Management team believed the proper process was being used. Purpose of the meeting is not defined regarding challenges. Alarm not viewed as abnormal which is a weird one, right? And then you chase these down. This RC right here is where you get a root cause. The further you go down, your root cause will be at whatever your lowest level is. We also have a contributing cause here. And then you've got your barriers. And at what place did they fail? Uh, these are just identifiers within the accident investigation I pulled this from. So those would be, uh, you know, especially if you have a really complex situation, you might have many, many barriers and you might come up with a hierarchy for them to keep them straight. I'm gonna show you a few different examples because there's a 
some different ways to do this. This is just one. So we, like I said, we have a root cause. We also have a contributing causes. Do I have any, I don't believe in this one. There's any dotted line. Oh, these are just dotted because we, okay, that's not. So yeah, we don't have any assumptions, at least not within this chart. Here's another example. This one doesn't have any specific identifiers, but just it will show you, you have your primary event line, secondary event line. Sometimes people will do this if you have secondary events that feed into this primary event. Um, I don't think we have that here, but essentially if you had uh, uh, sections or sub events that are components of that, the merit their own aspect here. So this is just another way of identifying those. Here's another one. These dotted lines, again, assumptions. We have a condition here or a contributing cause, and then we've got a fully dotted in one where not only is the relationship assumed, this is also assumed, but we can't prove it yet. Um, this is one of the ones I like the best because um, it captures procedures too. So this is another thing you'll do where this is your you know, timeline progression. You might explain different procedures and how they went through it. And then, it, like I said, in each inappropriate action, you'll be stepping down. You'll also sometimes step down in events like this one is. And then this one has root causes down there with your failed barriers. So we'll go into um, the Y staircase and Y tree. These, I, I like to cover these two sim almost simultaneously because they really overlap. Like we've talked about that with different methods, but these two are very close. Um, and it's usually how you progress down an event and causal factor chart is usually through a Y tree style. So, you know, here, if we have this event C, well, why did event, if event C happened and there was an inappropriate action, okay? What caused it? What was the condition that prompted the inappropriate action? What was the response of the person? Why did they respond in that way? That's usually where you'll find a root cause. In the, in the instance, you were gonna find a human error one. So why trees, um, you're going to continue to ask why until you get to the behavioral level of the issue. Um, if you don't ask why enough, it's possible that you might not go deep enough. And then um, recurrence of the event is likely to happen because the true causes haven't been totally sussed out. So here's an example here um, where you'll go through here. So like, hey, there was a fire. Okay. Well, we know fire needs three things, so we can populate that. There had to have been some event with oxygen, fuel, and an ignition source. Walk down, why is there oxygen? Because it occurs in nature. No action was taken or removed. People were present. You need oxygen around if there's people present. Fuel, well, there was a gas pump on the loading dock. The fuel hose was leaking and nobody cleaned up the fuel that had spilled. Well, why not? Not my job, not my attitude, no direction from management. So as you can see, this is kind of how you do, and you get kind of down to the bottom there. And then you step this up. So here's our initial progression. See that? And now we're adding this in with the building burn down. Okay, well, there was no response from a fire department, no automatic suppression system, additional combustibles, these kind of aspects here. And then you just kind of Start going down. This one only goes deep into the fire web, this example, but you know, no automatic notification. Why not? Fire department not watching. Why not? And those aspects there. Here's another one that I uh, like a lot because it captures especially some of the um, personnel focused ones. So, uh, deconner, deconner in nuclear terms is. Uh, somebody who works for like radiological controls who may be decontaminating something. So they fell through an opening in some grading. Well, why? The opening was not properly protected. So it wasn't like a cover on it. 
and they didn't see the opening. Okay, why wasn't it properly protected? The riggers did not see the decounter coming, and there's no requirement if workers are in the area to properly protect or cordon off the area. Why didn't they see him coming? Nobody was assigned to watch, and they were paying attention to the valve. Why was nobody assigned to watch? It's not normal practice. And so therefore there's no expectation. And you can see how this is going, you know, they were not looking for it. They're not aware of an opening. It wasn't discussed in the pre-job brief. So pre-job briefs, plan a day, these kind of terms. Those are really important in a lot of these industries where you go through and actually identify um, the specific hazards in an area and make sure everybody knows. Um, vice versa, they don't see the opening moving too quickly. Why? Self-imposed schedule pressure due to dose. So that means uh, due to dose. So they're carrying this large bag of radiological waste. They're concerned that they can get dosed with radiation um, as a part of their job. And so they're trying to hurry to get it done and gone as soon as they can. So keep in mind, you know, each tool you use is looking at, no, oh, that's weird, the accident from a different angle. The idea is that all the causes will be found and accounted for as you use different methods. So, you know, you'll employ different ones uh, in the same accident to make sure that you're catching all of the particular causes, contributing causes, different factors. Um, so the areas of overlap will bring additional insight and information. And I wanna go back up here to this example for the event causal factor chart. So notice how this follows that Y tree uh, style kind of, see, right? So, okay, we have the vessel head seal leak off pressure high alarm. So this is the alarm text and then at looks like. 0200 and then 0700. In between, there was not really a condition concern with the presence of that alarm. And then as you go through, okay, well, what caused this to happen? This is that uh, we talked about here, this uh, condition or in um, this one right here, condition response. So that's one of those loops that you can get into. So what was the condition? And, What's the response? And then as you kind of go down here, you know, you'll run to, so this one is the root cause. And we've talked about how to define root causes this is kind of a challenge. So reinforcement, uh, let's walk this down. So it wasn't challenged at the plan of the day meeting. Why? It's failed to question whether the alarm was due to inner seal O-ring degradation. So this is a technical problem. Um, obviously the failing to question is a concern, but also, there may be some technical gaps of, as to how the system works. You have, and why did nobody question that? Multiple distractions due to a startup. Then reinforcement of principles for a strong nuclear safety culture did not occur on a routine basis. Now, if you're not within nuclear, that doesn't, that seems like one of those um, really not direct or not defined <laughs> root causes. Um, within nuclear safety culture has very specific meanings. So if this was something I was doing, I would actually break that down into what aspect of the nuclear safety culture failed. In this instance, it would be questioning attitude. Um, it's something you'll come across in nuclear where anything can be questioned at any time. Um, we actually have this at the INL where we uh, have a stop work policy so at any given moment in any job or work or task that's being done, um, any employee, the, no matter where they are in the chain of command can call for a stop work. If they see something is unsafe or concerning, um, then there's some paperwork you have to do, but it immediately kind of forces a plan of the day meeting immediately with that concern and all work has to stop and you can't be retaliated against or anything like that. But um, so that's really what they're talking about there. So in my opinion, this should have been broken down even farther, but if this was done within nuclear, then people might not have. 
Um, and then we have some contributing causes, right? So management team believed the proper process was being used. And then you had this, um, the evaluation was listed as a to-do item. That's why this isn't a contributing cause. Because it definitely seems like they are trying to deal with this. Um, they weren't successful, obviously, but at least uh, if there's some progress being made where it's being slated as a to-do item, that's a concern. Now, if you have another condition here that says, you know, the to-do list is where things go to die, then that's also a problem. But we have a contributing cause here. Purpose of the meeting is not defined regarding challenges, which is, again, part of a plan of the day. So that's odd. But that would be your barrier, too, is that you just have a purpose of the meeting. Here's another barrier. The safety culture is a barrier. Then when we go down through here, we get to internal OE with new seals was not adequately applied. Um, OE, I'm going to guess, is operating experience, but I could be wrong on that. Um, that's typically the acronym, but you never know. Um, and again, that's a barrier. If it's an operating experience, then operating experience usually describes a uh, standard operating practices or best practices is what you might think of them as. Um, and that's also a contributing cause. So as you can see here, like you'll go down now in the ones that I've done, typically you will only, you'll only have like one area where you'll have a low, low one. And usually that's your root cause. It's the one you can follow the most or the deepest, but not necessarily. It kind of depends on the situation, but I hope that one's useful. This is one of my favorite tools because it really just helps you capture what's going on. Um, and, you know, be aware of these symbols, but you're not like bound to them or anything. Um, it's just, if you're going to be communicating it to somebody who's familiar with it, they know what these mean generally. Um, but there are some variations, you know, we covered a couple different examples where you've got some of these. So again, as long as it makes sense, and it can be quickly identified. You know, you wouldn't want to make all these symbols or all of your all of your uh, sections or things on the chart uh, the same shape because that kind of defeats the purpose. Because if everything is the same shape, your visual system is not going to pick out anything weird. So that's one of those to kind of keep in mind. And just keep in mind, you can have multiple inappropriate actions. Um, so like. You know, looking at the Chernobyl stuff, right? There's just these diamond sticky notes will be everywhere. There's tons of those. And it sounds like with the Surfside building collapse, probably too. So that's one to think about there. So next up. So I picked a date um, for your next presentations. Um, tell me if it doesn't work. Shoot me a Slack post, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and we're going to do those. I want them, uh, let me pull up my calendar so that I'm actually saying the right things. So Friday, December 3rd is when they need to be posted in Slack by then. Um, and then we'll follow the same process. Um, you'll have a general discussion of the events, try to identify and dig into areas that are confusing or challenging to capture. If at the end of a particular section or slide, you're just I don't totally know why this happened, but this happened and it's odd. That's okay. You are, you have all picked very complex and challenging famous accidents that are famous because they're confusing and challenging and they are muddy. It's difficult to pick exactly what's going on in a lot of those instances. So what you're finding, and this is part of what's been a challenge as you've been going through is, you know, well, this could be the root cause, or this could be, that's okay. Um, Cause you're, you're missing in general, you're missing massive subject matter expert, like expertise on the situation, um, which is usually where a lot of that comes into play about what should be done and those kind of things. So um, definitely dig into some of those, um, start thinking about tools that you want to use. Uh, if you're not sure, reach out to me and I can kind of help you you know, we can soundboard or bounce them back and forth and see what we think and try to get to one. 
then so for the next couple weeks um see we've got two weeks then thanksgiving break the week after that is when your presentations are due so the week after thanksgiving there won't be a lecture there won't be a lecture during the week of thanksgiving um i'm doing that because i always hated it when people teachers would, or professors or whatever would assign stuff like the monday after thanksgiving break it's like come on man you know we're all doing it that weekend so you should enjoy your holiday not have stress um so for the next two weeks we will be focusing on extent of cause and condition um and then a little bit about just kind of interviewing techniques and methods so um that's kind of what we're looking at for the schedule wise and then you'll post so you'll post your presentations on the third and then we'll kind of consider the final day of class quote unquote the 10th so for the week after your presentations, um, it'll just be your back and forth about those presentations. So um, that's my plan. Let me know if it uh, doesn't work or you have any concerns or anything um, as we go on there. Um, also, I think I, I asked for this last week, but if there's anything in particular that you want us to go back to or cover again, cover in more depth, post that up on the Slack because um, I might have, you know, I might do a, a shorter or even just a, a little bit more of a loose lecture on whatever that topic is throughout those weeks that just you guys can look at for information. Um, we also, I had asked about uh, kind of a scheduled Zoom call, if that's something anybody's interested in where we can all hop on the same Zoom call and then just go back and forth for a little while, that's fine. Um, just kind of let me know what works best or what you think would be most beneficial to you. So um, yeah, that sounds good. And if you, uh, like I said, if you have any questions or anything, uh, let me know. Have a good week, weekend.